Hey YouTube, welcome to TCT, and I'm going to put on chapstick, even though I already did my base face, I primed my lids, and I did my brows. So I'm going to do another look. This will be the second tutorial. I'm kind of out of it today. I'm sorry, and you can probably already pick that up. But then again, I'm kind of like this all the time anyway. <laughs> this will be another tutorial with the Vizzy Art 03 Bridal Satin palette and today I'm going to use the middle row so I'm going to use this row right here and so I'm going to start I'm not sure yet if I want to attempt to do a halo eye and I'm not good at it I've only tried it a few times which is why I'm not good at it because I haven't practiced it but I'm, tr I'm wondering if I want to try and do a halo with um, this on the inner and outer corner this on the inner and outer corner and this in the center and so I'm wondering if I want to try that. So let's do a trial and error and see how that goes. And this may just end up being an inner corner highlight. To blend out my crease, I will again use the Viseart Warm Matte Palette number 10. Because these are great for neutral shades for my complexion. So we're going to go in. I have brushes out. I'm organized. Hey! So the first shade... <laughs> It probably would make sense if I put this one in the in the center, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to start with the middle shade. I'm going to put this shade here in the center of my lid. Oh, I got to tilt my mirror down here so I can see. So we're going to put that in the center and it, up into my crease area because all of this extra skin and I do want this color to be noticeable when I am looking straight ahead so you see how you can see that up here even though that's not my crease so we're going to pretend I mean even though it's not my lid so we're going to pretend so we're going to put <laughs> this here and we're going to do the blending afterwards I am not sure how to describe this color because it's looking brownish on here, but it is like a grayish brown, still gray color. I'm horrible with describing colors. I mentioned that in the last um, video I did with this palette. And I know why well, I don't think color dyslexic is a, is a word, but I think I might be color deficient, even though I've always passed the tests on, you know, if I'm colorblind or not. So I'm not colorblind, but I think it's something with color depth perception that my brain doesn't pick up. And so I do like this shade. Actually, I like this whole palette. And I was hesitant, well not hesitant, but skeptical because it's an all shimmer palette, but because I have other palettes that are all matte including two all matte Vizier palettes. I'm like, you know what? I don't have a problem dipping into one of those, especially because those tones in the other one really go with my skin tone. So now we're going to take this purple here, and I'm slanting it so you can see the true color, because this way this is not the true color. These are the true colors. So I'm going to take this purple right here. I do know that's purple. And please, if it's not purple, tell me that it's not really purple. Like, if it's a fuchsia, let me know that. But that one to me does look purple. So we're going to press that <laughs> on the outer corner and above the crease. So that when I'm looking at you, you can see it. Oh, I like that. And we're going to do the same on the other eye. I did my base face and brows and everything first just to cut down on time because the last one I did with this palette I did my entire face in the video was like 20 something minutes and I don't like videos over like 10 or 15 minutes and then I'm like here I am doing these long ass videos so I like this so I'm going to take that also same brush on the inner corner the inner third of the lid and I'm going to meet up where that first color is that grayish color well, the color that I think is gray. And we're going to do the same thing on the other eye. I just had a thought, like, what if this wasn't even recording? Like, I am just so out of it today. It did rain a lot last night. They were saying Delaware was going to get snow, and we didn't, um, which is good. 
but I'm just really out of it and I want to blame it on the weather but there's other days where I'm just really out of it and I have no idea why so I don't want to blame it on the weather because I don't know what it is I am digging how this looks I'm going to take the tip of this brush and just go lightly above that gray line that first color I put down just to bring that purple over very lightly and as you can tell I did not put any extra color on the brush I'm just dragging what's already there on my lid and on the brush to bridge those two colors together I'm liking this so far well the technique I'm liking so far I do know with halo eyes from what I've seen they usually do the center shade last <laughs> Um, I've tried it that way a couple times and it was disastrous. <laughs> so I said, let me try it my way and see if I can do a halo eye. And that gray is being eaten up. We're going to take a different brush. We're going to take um, a smaller angled brush. And we're going to take this color here in the corner. Or do I want a different brush altogether? No, let's just see what happens with this. Now this, this to me I think is like a still gray, blue-ish color. I don't know. I don't even know why I'm trying. <sighs> and we're going to put this um, more directly in the outer corner. And more directly in the inner corner. Ooh, I like that. I might be learning something new here. <laughs> but we'll see when it's all said and done what it looks like and I'm only taking a little color at a time on this brush even though it is a small brush and so it does help me to get it where I want it and so when I'm swiping in here I'm just going like very lightly so I can control the amount of shadow because I don't want to overpower that purple. This brush was a good choice. And so I'm going to lightly sweep this over. Oh, that's looking nice. And I'm going to come this way and lightly sweep this over. And you'll notice I'm holding the brush all the way at the end. And it is a short brush. Well, not really. I guess it's like an average size brush. But I am holding it all the way down at the bottom of the handle so that I will get light sweeping motions or light padding motions versus holding it all the way up here and putting a lot of pressure and concentrating more of the color where I may not want it to go. So just really lightly, I'm feathering that over. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I am liking this. I think I'm learning something new here, guys and gals. And non-gendered. I don't want to leave anyone out. All of you. All of you that are watching, I'm learning something here. And I'm liking it. This side to me looks darker than this side, and I don't know if it's the lighting or if it's the way I'm sitting. And so I'm going to take a little bit more, just to, I just barely tapped it and then tapped it off, just in case it is just the lighting. Because if it is the lighting, then this side will end up way too dark. I don't know if I'm liking this color combination now that I'm doing this. I'm liking the technique. I'm liking how the colors are showing up. I'm just not sure about the colors themselves. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take um, a larger flat shader brush and I'm going to go into this pink down here. And I'm going to put that on the center of my lid and see what that does. Because that gray just seems a little dull. I want to say and this is not really showing up this pink but I think I, I'm understanding the halo eye now for like my eye shape and for what I need to do I could have used Doriline 
with these shadows to get them to show up a little more. But because of my skin tone, I mean, the colors are showing up on my lid as they are in the pan. And so I'm thinking it's just my skin tone. And I also don't really think I look well with, um, what's the word? Cool colors. And this one is a cool, actually, these three are really cool to me, to my eye. I'm going to take a fluffy brush and just lightly, there's no product on this brush, and I'm just lightly blending the edges above that crease, between my crease and my brow bone. And blending out this edge, blending out the inner corner. We're at 12 minutes already. Like, I did not think this was going to be this long. And because I'm sweeping this up, I, I think I can get away with not doing a brow bone highlight today. I used uh, the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer again. The one that I'm always saying I don't like how it makes it look pasty. My entire lid look pasty. Um, but I'm thinking it's working with what I'm doing today for some reason. And so we're still just blending. Blending, blending, blending. I think this is a successful halo look. I'm just not sure with the colors that I chose. But I am really pleased that I've learned how to do a halo that works for my eye shape. So I am happy about that. And now that I'm thinking about it, the sensor lid color is usually like a really strong shimmery shade. And so maybe that's why. So this would be like a subtle halo. But I'm liking it and I really don't feel like I need a brow bone highlight. But what I am gonna do right now, <laughs> I'm gonna take that same, I'm gonna take this shade, I don't think that's gonna look right. I'm gonna take this pink shade here and put that in the inner corner. Cause I don't think that orange is gonna blend well and for my inner, for an inner corner highlight. And this really just adds a little sheen over top of those other two colors, which is fine. Okay, I see what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Separate the clean brushes from the dirty brushes. Lower lash line before I, I was going to close this up. I'm going to take... Uh, First shade, just because we didn't, I'm going to take this underneath my lower lash line, but that's not what's going to be there. Since I did say I was going to use this entire row. And again, I'm holding the brush down near the end of the handle. And we're going to do the same thing. Oh, I just hit my waterline. Wipe that brush off. You want to go into that gray color, that center lid color, and sweep that right here. Oh, I got shadow in my eye from when the brush hit my waterline. And it's making my vision blurry. <laughs> Wiping the brush off. Ugh. Going in with the purple. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that here and here. That purple here and here. Even if I use the mirror back there, but that's even further away. Wiping that brush off again, I'm going to take that deepest color there and there. Wiping that brush off, I'm going to take that pink and put that in the middle. Wipe 
this that you hear is me tapping a brush. This brush that I blended out the other colors up top, again, I'm holding the brush down at the end. I'm just going to lightly sweep this, blend this, even though I don't think it needed to be blended because all the colors went on really well. But just because... And so also, I'm going to go into, because I do want something matte up here a little bit, so I'm going to go into the Warm Mattes number 10, this palette, and I'm going to take, I'm going to take this shade here, with that brush that I was using with no shadow to blend out the other colors, and I'm just going to lightly um, put this in the space between the crease color and my brow bone. Okay, y'all like how that toned that down a little bit. And this is like a non-color for me, which is great. So that is that. And what else are we going to do? Oh, I have a brush here I didn't use. Yay, clean brush. <laughs> I'm going to take, oh, my eyes. I'm going to take the um, Hourglass Mechanical Gel Eyeliner. This one, I believe it's a dark blue, and I'm saying that because of the shade right here in the middle. But I'm trying to see if it does say a, sh a shade or a color. Ocean, excuse me, ocean floor. I don't know why I always get on camera and then it's like I need to belch. Can I do this looking in here? No, let me look down here. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I'm going to try just using what I'm filming when I do my waterline. And hopefully I won't. <laughs> but that worked out. Even though this is kind of scary. When I do my upper rim, looking into my, my device, my recording device, sometimes the tip of the pencil goes underneath <laughs> my lash line. Like inside, between my lash line and my eyeball. <laughs> so that's what makes that scary. I'm like, am I going to run this along underneath? And just be running it along my eyeball. Between my eyeball and my lid. The good thing is if it's a is if it's a soft pencil, it doesn't hurt. It just feels weird. And I just did it. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. As long as the tip doesn't break off under there, then it it's not a problem. And now my eyes are tearing a little bit. Oh, I need a Q-tip. Alright. I am trying to rush, guys. I'm just out of it and being slow, and I apologize if this video is boring. What are we going to do? Upper lash line, we're going to use Stila Smudge Pot, and hmm, we're going to use an hourglass angled eyeliner brush. And we're going to see, I can hear the rain. I'm thinking I don't like these kind of brushes because it's hard for me to get inside, like this area in here. Why did I get this brush? Mm, I'm not liking it for that area. But it's great for like over here just not great for getting in here so we're going to do the other side and then I think I'm gonna switch brushes I think I might give this brush away it is a nice brush an expensive brush see this side I can get because I can tilt my head and with the angle of my arm I can get in this corner but this line came out thicker than I wanted it to Oh boy. I was doing so well. <laughs> uh, I was doing so well and I just completely, <laughs> I don't think you guys can see that, but I just completely screwed that up over there. Oh gosh, fix, that looks even worse. It doesn't look as bad on 
your end, I don't think, as it looks in person. <laughs> I am struggling. <laughs> oh, let me try. Oh, I did say I was going to switch brushes. Let me really do that, like, for real, for real. I'm going to take an angle brush. Because <laughs> this one does allow me to get right here very easily. Yeah, I think I'm going to give the hourglass one away because... Uh, it's too challenging for me. I want makeup to be easy. I want it to be fun. And I want to just be able to do what I want to do quickly. And so this is the... I like that. Even though my wings are looking... My baby wings are looking really weird. But I'm liking this look. This is one of my many attempts. Not really. <laughs> A few attempts of a halo eye and I think if I were to use a brighter color for the center so this would be like a daytime halo easy everyday kind of eye and again in the bridal satin Bezier palette we use this middle row this is in the center inner corner outer corner inner corner out outer corner more detailed same underneath and then we put this pink on the center of the lid and we used this also has a highlight underneath lower lash line i put this first the gray in the middle and then this on the inner and outer this on the inner and outer use a blue liner on my inner rims and a black liner on my upper lash line and that is it for this look if you have any questions please let me know i apologize this was so long i'll see where i can speed it up um when i start editing and if not, and you're still here, thank you for being here. And if you have this palette, let me know what your thoughts are on it. If you have done looks with this palette, feel free to post them below and I will check them out. Thank you for watching and you'll see me in the next video. Bye. Do I want to do a lip real quick? No, because that's just too much. <laughs>